YouTube. West Coast Prepper RN here. Um, yes, it's me. I cut my hair. <laughs> uh, cut about seven or eight inches off my hair today. Just got tired of it. So yeah, I look a little different. Um, anyway, I promised uh, Low Buck Prepper that I would do um, um, a video about burns. Now, let me just preface this whole thing by saying yes, I am a registered nurse. I don't know a whole lot about burns. Um, I found out firsthand the other day um, when I burned myself um, really, really bad. <laughs> it was um, it was kind of a silly thing. Uh, I was really, really tired because you know I don't get much sleep because I work nights and I have a four-year-old. So, um, and what I did was it was the other night and I had made him some microwave popcorn, and I don't know what I was thinking, but. I reached in the Daddy's microwave. Taping. Honey, mommy's taping. Can you go play with your play doh? Um, that wasn't you. That was daddy. Well, I make you popcorn every other night. So anyway, he's talking to the camera. He meant last night. Yes, daddy made him popcorn last night. When I burned my finger, I had made him some popcorn and I pulled the popcorn out of the microwave and noticed that when you make a bag of microwave popcorn, some of the butter kind of sputters out. And I looked at my microwave and there's butter all sputtered in there. And so I gave him his bowl of popcorn and I turned around and I don't know what I was thinking. I grabbed like this, I grabbed the glass tray. Now I probably had the unfortunate luck of grabbing that glass tray right where the uh, microwave part, the heater part of the bag of popcorn, there's a dark part of one of the sides of the bags, you know, it says this side up. I grabbed it right where that had been laying. So that microwave table tray was probably, that glass tray was probably about 400 degrees. <laughs> and I grabbed it out of the microwave and it burned me so fast and so bad that it shocked me. And so instead of like letting go of it, I put it on the counter over here. So I had a hold of that thing for probably like three seconds. It burned me so bad that it didn't blister. The skin, and I'm going to show you a picture, this is what my burn looked like. See if I can get that in there. So anyway, that was my burn. Uh, it doesn't look bad. It's actually a second degree burn. It was a sear. Uh, it never blistered. And that white skin you saw was hard. Um, it just, it, it wasn't a scald because it wasn't water. It was, it, it seared it. Like I had taken my finger and went to brown meat and just like it, it audibly, I could, I could hear my finger making a sound when I hit that tray. Um, that's how hot it was. It seared me. That is the most excruciating burn I have ever had. It's not the biggest burn I've ever had. Um, it's by, it was by far the most painful burn I've ever had in my life. So um, for the next five and a half hours, um, literally I was in excruciating pain anytime I took my finger out from under the cold water. And so being a nurse, <laughs> I went to the ER the next day. I called a friend of mine who works in our ER and I said, hey bud, uh, I burned myself really bad and I have no idea what to do about it because you know, I don't know much about burns. I've never worked in a burn unit. They don't really teach you that much about burns. They give you kind of the overall general, you know, this is a first degree burn, this is a second degree burn, so on and so forth. Um, it never turned red, it never blistered. And just last night, the skin finally peeled in one, one sheet, just came off, sloughed off. And the skin on this finger is very tender, <laughs> very tender. 
Uh, and it's very painful when I put it under something warm, like hot water, you know, hot water or when I was in the shower today. Um, so it's very tender. Um, and I don't have a whole lot of feeling there right now. So I know that I had some pretty good nerve damage in that finger. Um, but the skin around the edges is where it's tender, where I do have some feeling. Uh, the actual pad where I burned, I don't have much feeling in it. Um, it's like baby butt skin. You can tell it's brand new skin. And um, anyway, it was, the, it was the oddest burn I've ever had because usually you get burned. Um, I had a burn on the back of my arm about this big um, from rocking up against um, a uh, pressure canner last year at my cousin's house. She has a very small little kind of um, galley type kitchen. And there's three of us in there and I rocked back to let somebody go ahead in front of me and I leaned up against a pressure cooker that was had been on there about an hour <laughs> and it just burnt the crap out of the back of my arm which is so tender um, anyway that was my burn I learned my lesson if my microwave is dirty I wait till it's cold <laughs> to clean it so so today I told Lobuck I was gonna make a, a video about burns. Um, I, I still don't know a whole lot about burns. You know, first degree burn would be, uh, for those of you who don't know, um, sunburn is a first degree burn. And for those you can use things like, as all as we all have probably been slathered from head to toe, you can use a multitude of things. Aloe vera is really good for uh, leaching some of that heat out and cooling their skin and, and uh, you know, keeping some moisture on it. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm still getting over my <coughs> Still getting over my crud. I picked some of this up because um, being the fair-skinned girl I am, uh, I'm pretty prone to sunburn. <laughs> so uh, this is aloe vera burn relief and it's got lidocaine in it. And lidocaine is an, uh, a, uh, yeah, I just totally lost my train of thought on that one. Um, it has anesthetizing properties. Uh, it'll it'll kill the burn. It'll kind of numb it, deaden it. So you can use something over the counter, uh, aloe vera burn relief. You wouldn't use this on a second degree burn. It, it uh, doesn't really work on a second degree burn. You'd want to use it with something like you know reddened skin, um, a, a light a light heat burn, one that has not blistered that would be okay. Something like this. Also, Bactine. Um, Bactine is an antiseptic first aid pain reliever. Um, this will this also works good you know for cuts and minor abrasions skin knees scrapes stuff like that it doesn't sting um, I remember my mother using on Bactine on me because I was you know I grew up on a farm I always had skinned up knees because I rode my bike in the gravel so um, you know you can use Bactine on sunburn it draws that pain out draws that heat out again not for second degree burns first degree burns only with any kind of burn, heat burn, uh, water burn, grease burn, um, minor burns, first or, or light second degree, um, the first thing you need to do is put it under some cool running water for about 10 to 15 minutes. Whatever you do, do not ever put butter or ice cubes on a burn. Uh, that's an old wife's tale, lard, butter, Crisco, whatever, you've heard a million of them. Uh, don't put any kind of oil product on a burn. Um, it's just not good for it. Cool running water. And, you know, if you have a pretty bad sunburn, you can take like an oatmeal bath or vinegar. Vinegar also, if you want to walk around smelling like a pickle, um, was a remedy when I grew up. My mother used to dab with a cotton ball. She used to dab vinegar on me for my sunburns. And it will also draw the heat out. I know that it does much for the burn, but it draws the heat out and it makes it more tolerable. Um, so the first thing you need to do is get some cool running water, not frigid cold, just nice and cool water, um, a little bit colder than tepid, um, and, and draw some of that heat out of it. Now the thing about burns that I learned firsthand is they don't hurt as bad if they're covered. And there's something about oxygen getting to a burn that makes it, makes it more painful, uh, as I <laughs> found out readily. Um, so I did a little research and, you know, I'm not going to talk about third degree burns. Those are the charring burns. Those are the, you know, house fire burns. Those are the kind that you get um, 
over a large percentage of your body, or they don't even have to be over a large percentage of your body, but they're very deep burns. They go through the dermis, or in, from the epidermis into the dermis. Those are the really bad burns. Those are the kind that you need to go to a burn center for and usually require a skin graft. And those are the kind of burns that are um, sometimes not painful because they have completely killed the nerves. Like it burns the nerves to the point where they're, some people don't feel their burn if it's that bad. Those are the kind of burns that you're put in the hospital for, and the skin is debrided daily, which is sometimes very excruciatingly painful. Um, and those are the ones that usually usually will require skin graft. You also can, if you have a large surface burn, on a second degree burn, sometimes you can require a skin graft. Uh, but I'm not going to get into those. I'm going to talk about the burns that probably you and I, with Thanksgiving coming up and the oven's going, uh, more than likely one or more of us is going to get a burn on the stove or um, splattered with some grease or something. So um, I'm just going to touch on the first degree burns and the uh, what I consider like I had a light second degree burn. <clears throat> the only thing that made mine a, a second degree burn is that um, I had some nerve damage in there. So um, like I said, it was the oddest burn I've ever had. Um, I don't really, I won't have a scar so to speak, I don't think, because it never did blister and never did peel really until the skin was healed underneath. And I attribute that to something called 1% Silvadine Burn Cream. Now this you cannot get over the counter. Um, it comes in a tub, and I actually was fortunate enough that I, when I went to the ER, when I went to work the next day after I burned myself, um, I went in and got some Silvadine put on it, and they put a, a gauze wrap over my hand because the air hitting my burn was crazy. It hurt so bad. And um, I swear by this stuff. I'm going to tell you what, I think this had every single thing to do with this healing up the way it did. Because after, after the, a day of having that on there, that white skin was gone. It didn't peel, but the white skin was gone. It like it re-adhered it, it healed it. Um, and I could stand to have it uncovered. So um, if you ever have the availability to get some Silvadine Burn Cream, get it. If not, uh, there's like a first aid antiseptic and burn cream and um, there's another burn cream which my cousin had, you know, burn gels were great. They also have lidocaine in them. My cousin had a jar of, a little pot of uh, Watkins burn cream. Now I don't sell Watkins. I use it. I love it. Um, I don't know any Watkins dealers. I buy mine on the internet from whoever's selling it. Uh, but she had some Watkins burn cream, and she smeared some of that on the back of my arm, and that burn was gone. I mean, the, the pain, the heat, everything was gone. And I went on with life just like normal. And um, about a week later, the skin sloughed off, and the burn was fine. Uh, it was just a first, first degree burn. I had a huge blister, and then it broke open and weep, you know, it was weeping all over everything. So I kept it covered and slathered some of that burn cream on there, and then uh, a couple days later, put some antiseptic cream on it and covered it with one of these. These are, This is very important if you have a burn or even a blister or a cut. Non-adherent pads. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna open this and show you if you can see this. I'm gonna kind of take this up to the camera because I want you to see, I don't know if I can get it in the light. It, it's got, see that sheen? that's like a fine mesh and it's very very slick and in the surface of this it's almost like um, a non-stick cooking you know something that that doesn't it won't stick it's very slick um, there is you know gauze in the middle of it but the the coating that's on the outside of this is very shiny and it still allows absorption of fluid and blood and whatever else, but it will not stick to that scab. It won't. Um, it won't be like when you peel off a band-aid and it takes the scab with it. Um, these are great. I just bought. A, I don't know a pack of them uh, because my husband's always cutting himself, or I'm always cutting myself, or you know whatever. So if you have any kind of a blister, a burn, a cut that is scabbing or you know, bug bites. If you're like me and you're really, really allergic to bug bites and you scratch in your sleep and it gets kind of weepy, if you put this over it, it will not stick. 
and it aids in healing and you can still put your you know, sporin or your first aid cream or, or your burn gel or whatever on it. Um, get one, get some of these. These are by far my favorite things. So anyway, um, so as a, as a refresher, if you burn yourself, don't put anything on except cold water and something that's specifically made for burns. Burn cream, burn gel, uh, you know, antiseptic cream, bactine, burn spray, aloe, whatever. Don't put butter on it. Don't put ice on it. Don't put lard on it. Don't do any of the, you know, <laughs> old wives tale remedies. Now, I'm, there's a bunch of you that swear by this. My grandmother, I think, was one of them. She swore by putting butter on a burn. Well, that can introduce a lot of bacteria and I don't know, I'm not going to get into the whole do's and don'ts and why's and whatever. I don't really think it works. It may work to pull the, the sting or the burn out for a few minutes, but it doesn't aid in healing and that's what the, the goal is, is to, aid, uh, is to aid in the healing process. Um, so, there's my burn. You can't even see it. There's a little tiny white line of dry skin that I just kind of keep peeling off every day. Um, I'm sure I've forgotten a whole bunch, and there's a whole bunch I didn't say about uh, second degree burns and third degree burns and what to do. Um, if you do, you know, if the crap ever hits the spreader um, and you're faced with somebody who's been chemically burned, chemical burns are, are a whole different ballgame, so are electrical burns. Any burn, other than I think a third degree, I, I, I don't really, you know, Gosh, messing with a third degree burn is kind of out of my scope. Um, cool, warm, or cool water, wash, irrigate, don't pull skin off, don't peel, don't pull charred, you know, nothing. If there's charred clothing or charred something, cool water and wrap it with something clean and get them to a hospital. If you're out in the middle of nowhere and you have to do what you have to do, um, there's probably not much I can tell you that you can't find on the internet, really. Um, I don't know if, um, <clears throat> what is it, USN ER doc, he has some great videos. I don't know if he covers burns. I don't know if Patriot Nurse covers burns. Um, burns are kind of a subject nobody likes to broach because there is such a wide range of possibilities and things that can go wrong with burns and uh, they're they're kind of hard to deal with if you get into the deep second and really charring third degree burns um, because usually those you know are burns that cover more than you know a large area and when I say a large area burn anything over about three or four inches is considered a large area burn on an adult. On a child, a large area burn is even smaller than that. They go by percentages of your body. Um, I'm sure you can probably find a chart when they say, you know, he was burned over 30% of his body. You know, the, they account for like the head as a percentage and an arm as a percentage and the trunk as a percentage and the groin as a percentage and each body part has a percentage that all adds up to total. And so you can't really, um, pinpoint without looking at that chart how much of your body you've burned. If you have a burn on your arm, I've had many, you can probably see, I'm notorious for hitting the rack in the oven for some reason <laughs> with my arm or my wrist uh, when I push stuff in the oven. So usually I've got little burns on my arms from hitting my hands on the oven. I don't know why, it's just a thing with me. <laughs> uh, this is the first time I've ever actually grabbed something and held onto it. So. It was like I got caught being stupid in a no stupid zone for sure. So anyway, um, cool water, put some dressing on it, and uh, get some medication in them, um, or yourself if you're dealing with your own burn. Um, take some ibuprofen and some Tylenol if you're an adult. Um, because those properties, uh, the properties of those over-the-counter medications um, aid in not only killing the pain, but their uh, uh, ibuprofen is you know, anti-inflammatory. So it will help in, you know, just, it'll help the pain. It'll dull the pain a little bit. Make it more tolerable. Like I said, I was, when I say I was in pain, the kind of pain that I had tears coming out my eyes. Well, 
I wasn't crying per se, but I was, I guess. The, the tears were coming because every time I took my finger out of that water, the pain was so intense in the end of my finger that um, I thought there for a little while I'd be better off cutting it off. It was that bad. So I sat on the couch with my hand. Actually, I got all three fingers. This one was the worst. I got the edge of this one and the edge of this one because of the way I picked it up. Um, I sat with my hand in a bowl full of cold water, cool water, for about five and a half hours until I could tolerate taking my hand out <laughs> of the water. And um, I'm sure that was kind of overkill. But uh, that's what worked for me. And um, like I said, none of this stuff is uh, meant to be uh, a cure-all end-all. It's just what I know. It's probably, excuse me, it's probably not much. Like I said, I don't know that much about burns. Um, just don't grab things that are hot. And uh, sailing manual and uh, low butt prepper and all y'all, do not light your cigarettes with booze. <laughs> Manny, when you did that, my heart stopped. Honest to God, I was thinking, oh my God, if he inhales that flame, he's gonna torch his lungs and that's it. Burn his lips, burn whatever. You know, I literally covered my eyes and cringed when I saw, <laughs> when I saw that video. Anyway. Uh, you guys be safe. I'm going to do another video. I'm, this was just for the burn thing. Um, I hope it helped. It, it's Like I said, I don't know that much about burns. Um, it's not something I deal with much. I'm a medical surgical nurse and I do a lot of, uh, not a lot anymore, but I do OB. So I don't work in a burn unit and I don't work in a large hospital anymore. So I don't really, and I don't work in the ER anymore. So um, I don't get the chance to work with people like this. So. Anyway, if you have questions or comments, I'd love to hear them. I'm sure there's things I left out. And um, if you want more information, seriously, Google it. <laughs> because there are so many, I'm sure WebMD, um, Patriot Nurse could probably tell you a hell of a lot more than me. Um, like I said, she has a very vast and extensive knowledge of probably a heck of a lot more. I think she's been a nurse quite a bit longer than I have. So uh, again, you never stop learning. And this was definitely a learning experience for me. But um, I can say that I am a diehard believer in this silvidine cream. So if you uh, have a doctor or friend or uh, if you go to the doctor next time, just ask them if you can, what's the best burn cream or do you need a prescription and can they get you some? <laughs> so it's always good to have on hand. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. Keep your powder dry, and I'll see you in the next video, which will probably be very shortly because I want to show you what I've been up to. So, talk to you later. Thanks for watching.